I need your deck. This is a bad one. The worst yet. There was an escape from the off-world colonies two weeks ago. Six replicants. Three male, three female. They slaughtered 20... A Blade Runner's job is to hunt down replicants. Manufactured humans you can't tell from the real thing. What's this? Roy Batty. Probably the leader. There was just one outfit making replicants that superhuman. The Terrell Corporation. Mr. Deckard, Dr. Eldon Terrell. I don't get it, Tyrell. Commerce is our goal here at Tyrell. More human than human is our motto. I was looking for six replicants in a city of 106 million people. You ever see this girl, huh? Never seen a buzz love. What I didn't know was they were looking for me. Questions. I just do eyes. Just genetic design. Just eyes. Hello? I'm in a bar here now, down in the fourth sector. Why don't you come on down here and have a drink? That's not my kind of place. Time to die. If I didn't care, more than words can say. If I didn't care, would I feel this way? If this isn't love, then I Excuse me, Miss Salome, can I talk to you for a minute? <laughs> you for real. <laughs> Well, today we close up the 35th anniversary of the, the summer of 1982, the, the movies and all that. <laughs> so we're closing with Blade Runner. So, yeah. Now, I kind of broke my, what I said, what I was going to do. I kind of broke a promise here. I said I was going to watch the original 1982 cut. But I thought about it, and I I think it was more appropriate to watch the recent Final Cut version. Because that's the version I think most people prefer, uh, even over the original theatrical cut. Um, some of the big differences between the Final Cut and the... The original theatrical cut is that the ending is totally different. There's a whole uh, ending where they're driving off into the mountains and things like that. And there's a whole uh, narration that Harrison Ford gives throughout the movie, giving it more of a futuristic detective story like uh, approach and make it, making it seem more film noir ish. Uh, so. In the final cut, none of that stuff is in there. And plus, there is a few CGI enhancements. It's very minimal, unless you're really paying close attention to what's going on. 
you may notice it, but then again, you may not. Um, like there's some lip sync. They what they did was they, for the most part, they went back and corrected a lot of audio sync issues that the film had, um, and some uh, and some continuity things like the whole scene where Joanna Cassidy is being is being chased by Harrison Ford. Well, in a couple of shots in the original cut, you saw the stunt double's face. And so um, through CGI, they managed to go in and put Joanna Cassidy's face on top of the, um, the stunt double's body. Uh, stuff like that. But do I think, what do I think of Blade Runner? It's an, I gotta be careful how I say this because I enjoy the movie, but um, it's, it's a movie that is so awkward and in its pace and I can't really describe it, but you know, it's, it's a movie that does give a warning to us as human beings not to let technology have its way be careful what we do with technology because it could cause problems um you know with the fact that they even created artificial intelligence to be slaves but they but the thing was they gave these robots a con they gave these robots feelings and emotions and so they it backfired so in a way we do need to be careful with what we do so yeah Blade Runner do I think it holds up uh, 35 years later yes and like I, I just said with the the message behind it that you know be careful with what we do with technology yes we're still we're living in that today matter of fact we are two years away from when this film is supposed to take place it takes place in 2019 here it is 2017 you know we you know we don't have the flying cars we don't have uh we don't have like holograms or anything like we do have some holograms, but they're not like sophisticated what's in the, in the film, but, you know, but, you know, we do have things like advertisements. We do have artificial intelligence. No, it's not sophisticated on the level as this, but, um, we do have thing. We do have propaganda, you know, it's, it's it's here you know but it's it's not as advanced as what is depicted in the film so that concludes the marathon of the summer of 1982 the 35th anniversary now here's the thing i was not able to watch every single movie that came out that summer there was a lot more. Uh, I thought I had the bulk of them, but I, what I did was pick the more famous ones. Um, let's see. Fast Times at Ridgemont High, I didn't get around to, um, even though that one was really famous. But some of the others, we're gonna. I'm gonna roll a little slideshow here with a song that was popular in 1982 by John Mellencamp. Back then, he was known as John Cougar. But uh, yeah, let's roll that slideshow and you'll see what, what other films came out. Now, that's just in the summer. This is between June and August. Okay, so let's roll, let's roll the slideshow.
if I missed your favorite movie amongst any of those, I do apologize. But hey, you yourself can do this. Um, you know, just pick a marathon of that year and watch your favorite films and give your own review of it. So from me to you, see you later.